As a society, we have a huge problem. Stuff is getting hotter. And no, I'm not talking about the Earth, who cares about that? I'm talking about the PC parts. In fact, right now, even stuff like NVMe SSDs are getting dangerously hot. And already for ages, motherboard manufacturers have been bundling these M.2 heatsinks with the motherboards. And in fact, even the manufacturers of the SSDs themselves now very often bundle in a heatsink for the units that produce a lot more heat. But that hasn't stopped the development of a huge third party market for NVMe heatsinks. Like the one I have right here, which you've probably seen already online under various names. This particular unit has taken the world by storm, though in reality it's just a pretty simple heatsink that has a random name plastered on it. Yeah, you can find this exact thing under like a dozen and three quarter different names on Amazon alone, making Amazon look even more like Wish every single day. But do you actually need to buy one of these if you don't have a heatsink already? Well, let's do some testing, shall we? Using a high-speed PCE Gen 4 NVMe from Samsung, let's see exactly how hot that thing gets without a heatsink, a motherboard heatsink, and with this thing right here. And as you can see, the differences are pretty big. These are the results after hitting the SSD with some crystal disk mark testing to see exactly how hot they can get under load. And clearly, this thing is really helping out. The temperatures are way lower. But should you care? Does it actually affect performance? As you can see right here, random and sequential read and write results from these crystal disk mark tests are all pretty identical and all within the margin of error. Even when equipped with a third party heatsink which removes way more heat than even a standard motherboard one, the difference in temperature doesn't seem to affect stuff at all. So it looks like thermals are not the bottleneck right here. One of the biggest ones is how we do these tests here on the Everrunner channel. Most of the time it's done on a test bench, i.e. not inside a case. So there's way more airflow coming onto the PC. Plus during testing, the only thing we were really pushing was the SSD. That means that the graphics card which usually sits on top of your NVMe SSDs wasn't doing anything and wasn't generating heat. Well, in a more realistic scenario, the heat generated by a graphics card will definitely interfere with that of your SSD, seeing how close they are and how much heat modern GPUs can emit. Not to mention the fact that Crystal Disk Mark is a very synthetic benchmark, i.e. not something you would do with your PC. You don't just run Crystal Disk Mark for fun, unless that's your hobby. In that case, Hey, welcome to the club. Most people are going to stress the SSDs by constantly moving data from games or other big files. So the constant request to load yet another level in a game, combined with the worst airflow inside a case, combined with a massive super hot GPU breathing down your neck, will mean that in a real life scenario, these SSDs can get way hotter to a point where it can actually affect performance. And it's been something that the industry has been clearly taken seriously, because even Corsair have released an M.2 SSD water block. No, I'm not kidding, that's a real product. That's how hard these things can get that they require water cooling. And even if you aren't doing anything to your SSD right now that makes it all hot and bothered, in the future that could change, especially when the direct storage API sees mass market adoption. So in summary, do you need something like this? Well, probably not, unless you're doing something that really makes your SSD run super hot. But the thing about technology is that it doesn't slow down and it doesn't cool down, so these things are only going to get hotter with time. So these recommendations may change even a year from now. But anyway, if you really need to buy a heatsink for your SSD, then the links to this one are going to be down in the video description below. Down there, you're also going to find our Patreon if you want to help support the channel that way. It truly goes a long way while you get awesome perks. And I'd also love to thank my existing patrons, Kevin Burns, Ryan, OKB, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, Coming Edge Clothing, and Jesse Huberman. Thank you guys so, so much. Support truly goes a long way. Down there, you're also going to find our Discord server if you want to talk to me or us at this store, whatever else really, our merch store, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. Video. If you didn't remember, subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good bye.